Requisition management is part of Dynamics GP. It's an easy way to automate your requisition process within your organization. I'm going to take a look at the setup here. Another video will address the processing of requisitions through the system. So let's take a look at the setup. Requisition management is part of Business Portal. So I'm going to start Business Portal here. And we'll take a look at the setup. First thing I want to do is go to Site Actions and then Site Settings. In here there's a separate section for requisition management. You can see it here. And we'll look first at the company settings. Let's select the company that we'll be looking at here, Fabricam. And you can see here from the screen, this is where I set up information about the requisition, the number, I can set some defaults here. Also, I can set up the approval hierarchy that I'm going to be using. We'll take a look at the hierarchy next. We can have multiple hierarchies, but we can only use one at a time. Also, there's some op options here about including non-inventory items or not. And then the notifications here. The system can send email notifications to people within the system about different events that are happening. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go up to the the breadcrumb here. This is a good way to navigate within requisition management. I'll click on that. It's going to bring up the options here. Let's look at notifications. Specifically, we're going to look at the assigned a role not notification here. So this is an email that can be sent out to the system anytime a requisition is submitted for approval. And let's take a look at that. Hit the modify button here. And this is a message that's going to be set out. You can see that it's going to be using variables based on information in the system and information for that requ requisition. So this requisition notification is going to be sent out via email to anybody that's in the approval role. Let's take a look next at the approval hierarchy. Go back to the breadcrumb here. Look at the approval hierarchy. And again, I have one approval hierarchy, but you can have as many as you want to but you can only have one effective at a time. Now in the approval hierarchy, you have the option of having users or roles be in the hierarchy more than one time. And one of the limitations of the hierarchy is that it's a one hierarchy and it cannot split to other approval routes. So there's no routing within the hierarchy itself. It's a pretty straightforward hierarchy. Um, this particular window has some right click options. If I hit modify, I can activate those and you can see what we can do here is if I right click on a role for example I can add a level above a role or a user add a level below so I can create my hierarchy fairly simple and here you see roles here you see individuals here as well next we'll take a look at the user setup I'm going to go back to requisition management pages and we'll take a look at users And we'll look at two different users. We'll look at Alicia Stevens here. Alicia is set up as a requisition approver, excuse me, a requisition creator. And if we modify her setup, we can take a look at some of the options here. You can set an approval limit. It can be zero or unlimited, anywhere in between. And people can also be set up as final approvers. So if they're an approver and they're also set up as a final approver, that requisition will go immediately to the purchasing person. So let's look at some of these options here. These options are just showing me what's going to be hidden, it's going to be editable or not editable. In other words, I can show it on the requisition itself, specifically the line item detail. So if I want to, I can hide all these items. In this case, Alicia Stevens would still be able to put in a requisition. She just would not have access to the account number, the item number, the price, the site ID, or the vendor ID. And we'll take a look at this in the next video to see how this shows up when someone processes a requisition. Now let's take a look at another ID. This is Phyllis Rego. Phyllis is set up as an approver. And you can see that she's set up with unlimited approval a limit. She's all also set up as a final approver and she can extend approval which means that she can look at other requisitions in other areas of the, of the business of the organization and she can approve those as well. So primarily when you have an approver you probably want to set that approver up an approval role so that role 
will have access to all requisitions in the organization or a subunit of that organization. It makes it easier for requisitions to go through the process in case one of the individuals is not available to approve the requisition. Finally, let's take a look at these roles in Business Portal. The roles, there's four specific roles set up for requisition management, and we'll take a look at them here just briefly. Any Business Portal user can be assigned to any one of these roles. We have a requisition creator, which is the most general. It allows people to create requisitions. Then we have requisition approver. They can approve those requisitions. They can be a part of the approval process and approval role. And then we have the requisition purchaser. And this is really the link between the requisition system and the purchasing functionality in GP. This is the person that will take the approved requisitions and turn them into POs in GP. And then the requisition administrator has the ability to administrate the system, basically set up the system the way that we've looked at it just now. The requisition management system is a simple system. It has some basic functionality to help you automate your requisition process. If you're currently on a manual system, I really suggest that you take a look at this because it's relatively easy to implement. It is relatively um, inexpensive and you may already own it. So I want you to give it a try and see if it will work for you.